Good morning. <clears throat> Wonderful to see you this morning. I pray you've had a good weekend and um, that you went to bed um, early last night and got your extra hour of sleep on the front end. And if not, um, you know, um, don't go to sleep during this sermon. Wait till later this afternoon. Thank you, Deanna. I know uh, she was here at 9.30 and 8.30 singing and and uh, she's reminding us that Easter is very close, isn't it? Easter is just three Sundays away. Can you believe that? Three Sundays away. I, I just hope it warms up a little bit so it'll, it'll feel a little bit like celebrating spring as well. But Easter, I want to encourage you, the Easter season is a wonderful time to invite, to invite others. And I want to challenge you to... Um, Think of uh, neighbors, think of friends, uh, think of family, think of those that may not always come to the church house to worship, and invite them to Easter services. We'll have an 8.30, 9.30, 11 o'clock service, and you will be pleasantly surprised that, uh, that those that may not think of going uh, to worship with other believers any time else will really want to come out on Easter because the Lord draws them. They realize somewhere deep within their heart that they need to celebrate the risen Lord. Jesus lets us know that he's real. So invite others for Easter morning services and invite others to the oyster roast Saturday, 3 o'clock, 3 to 6, right, Frank? And uh, let, let them come. They'll... They'll experience uh, wonderful food, but uh, Christian fellowship will rub off on them as well as they, uh, as they see the Lord in, in, uh, in each other and in each of us. I play golf with a group of guys, and uh, last couple of weeks I've been inviting them to the oyster roast. They're probably out playing golf today, but I'm going to at least get them to the oyster roast. I'm working on them to get them here. But uh, they even said, one of the guys without my prompting uh, yesterday said, now, guys, we need to support Jim uh, next Saturday. Let's, after we play, let's get out to that oyster roast. Then he said something about free food. And, um, so I don't know what the motivation was. But invite others uh, to that. It's a wonderful recipient that, um, that we're working towards, this little baby Juliana. And I know that God will bless our efforts. Well, we are journeying towards the Easter season and that great celebration day. This is the season of Lent, and this whole year we're looking at the Gospel of Mark, but we've shifted to the last part of Mark these these last few weeks and leading up to Easter Sunday because uh, Lent uh, Lent calls us to, to examine our spiritual lives very deeply. It's a time when when uh, we can pause and reflect and take stock, where are we in our relationship with Jesus Christ? And I hope that you're doing that. And we are on this victory march of our salvation, this victory march of Jesus as he moves towards uh, becoming alive again, like Deanna sang about, towards the resurrection. And we said, though, with with every victory march, getting there is, some, is full of pain sometimes. It's full of tough decisions. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's full of not knowing what the future holds the next hours. And we're living that with Jesus through the last hours of his life and through his trial and through the crucifixion. So another great couple of weeks to invite your friends, especially those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. We're going to talk next couple of Sundays about the cross. And we're going to talk Sunday about the resurrection and what that means. And I will clearly let people know how they can ask Jesus in their hearts. So you invite them. But this morning, we want uh, to look at uh, the encounter between Jesus and Pilate. A fascinating encounter. And that particular message is found in Mark chapter 15. It's found in each of the Gospels. I encourage you to to read those two, uh, especially John, who really develops the dialogue between Pilate and Jesus. But in chapter 15 of the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel says this, beginning with verse 1, 
Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man named Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Well, We can learn from this encounter between Jesus and Pilate. I think the most important lesson for me this week in reflecting on this is about the importance that we have to make personal decisions in our life. Now, we know we have to make decisions all the time with ourselves, with our family, about our businesses, about where, where we work, or about school, wherever we are in life, but we also have to make decisions about where we are in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that in this this encounter with Pilate, Jesus really shares with us about making decisions. And one thing we really learn is to stop making excuses and start making decisions in our spiritual life. Stop making excuses and start making decisions. In this scene, basically, we find Pilate fighting a losing battle. One person came up to me after the 930 service, and he was right. He said, you know, Pilate was between a rock and a hard place, wasn't he? No matter what he did, he was going to make somebody mad. But yet, in so, and we'll see this in a minute, so difficult, he tried so hard not to make a decision and pass it off that he really made the decision. And that was to deny Jesus Christ for his life. And we can compare Pilate's struggle with judging Jesus and struggling with his own conscience that he knew Jesus was innocent and how we obey Christ in our life. So let's look at a few things. First of all, I think it's obvious that Pilate was impressed with Jesus. Pilate was impressed with Jesus Christ. He knew he had seen revolutionaries many times as governor. He had seen rebels. He had seen those that were dangerous to Rome, dangerous to people who were going to be violent men. And he had sent many of them to death on the cross, hadn't he? He knew what they looked like. And I believe... In a, mo- in a moment, in 30 seconds, he knew Jesus was not one of them. Jesus wasn't going to harm anyone. Jesus' kingdom, as Jesus said, was of a different world. Jesus was a man of peace. Jesus wasn't any threat to Rome. Jesus wasn't even any threat to his own people. And he admired Jesus for just remaining silent through these false accusations that everyone was throwing at him. But yet, even though 
the Spirit began to stir in Pilate. And I think that's the other thing that's happening here is that Pilate is searching spiritually in his life. He doesn't know why. He may not understand it right now. But the Spirit of God is working in Pilate's heart as he's trying to do his secular job. And you can see this turmoil, this battle on the inside with him and what to do with Jesus. Pilate was was the person or like the person who feels the power of Christ but is just too afraid or never yields to that power. And there are people today and maybe some of you here in this room who who've had yet yielded to the Holy Spirit and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have heard the gospel. You have felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know you should come to Jesus in repentant faith of your sins. But for some reason, you do not. Something holds you back. Something doesn't let you take the next step. Something doesn't let you pull the trigger. The story of Pilate and Jesus reminds us and demands us that Jesus asks for a decision, doesn't he? We have to pull the trigger. We have to take that step. We have to confess. We have to make Jesus Lord of our life. Now, the 19th century preacher, Charles Spurgeon, great preacher, and uh, he just had a way back in the 1800s of putting things plainly and bluntly. I guess that's the way preaching was back then. In one of his sermons about indecision, he said this. He said, there was a man who was almost saved in a fire, but he was burned. And there was another who was almost healed of a disease, but he died. And there was another who almost reprieved, was almost reprieved, but he was hanged. And there are many in hell who were almost saved. Almost saved doesn't get us there, does it? Almost, almost saved, coming and knowing him and knowing Jesus is real and, and singing the great hymns and hearing the beautiful anthems of the choir is wonderful for our spirit. It lifts us up, but it doesn't save us. Personal decision in Jesus Christ is the only way. Even believers, for those of us that have believed in the Lord a long time, the next step is is we have to make decisions of how we're going to make Jesus Lord of our life. We need to make decisions when we feel Christ asking us to participate in his kingdom, to, uh, to serve in various ways. And we can do the same things. We can put off that decision. Some people know that they need to be more involved in personal outreach and evangelism, but they're not. Some people know that that they, they need to be spending more time in personal prayer and Bible study. Some people know that they need to be coming to worship the, Jesus Christ, the resurrected, every Sunday with other believers. But you just don't make that decision. You don't follow through. We have to follow through for a decision to be made. You see, it's not enough to just be impressed with Jesus, is it? Jesus wants us to make him Lord. If we're going to receive the eternal spiritual benefits of our Lord and Savior. And being impressed is not enough. Second of all, Pilate then seeks a way of escaping. He tries to escape making a spiritual decision for his life. Have you ever sought to escape making a spiritual decision? Pilate thought he could do it by putting the most notorious, murderous scoundrel he could find in front of the people, Barabbas. This was an insurrectionist. This was a rebel. This was a mean man, a murderer. No comparison. Can you imagine being there that day and here's Jesus and here's Barabbas? I'm sure Pilate thought certainly, certainly this mob is going to choose Jesus, the Lamb of God or or the innocent man in his view. But just as it happens many times 
in culture after culture and history upon history, the crowd chose violence over peace and love, didn't they? The crowd chose violence over peace and love. And, you know, we're, we're pretty good at that too, or, or not choosing between that, but in finding excuses for not serving God, for, for finding excuses for, for not just declaring that Jesus is our Lord and taking the next step. And we say things, we don't hold up Barabbas, but we hold up other excuses. I'm just too busy at work right now to be that involved. I've worked all week and I'm tired. I'm just too tired to get to church and worship. God knows I need my rest on Sunday morning, especially on daylight savings time. <laughs> I just don't have enough time in the day. I, or I don't have the talent, the skill for that job. I don't want to try anything new. Excuses, excuses. Another great preacher, Billy Sunday, who spoke, who preached in the early 1900s, he made this statement about excuses. He said, excuses are reasons in the skin of a lie. Now, you got to think about that. <laughs> excuses are really just reasons in the skin of a lie. There's usually not much truth in excuses. It's usually just something we don't want to do. But if Pilate's encounter teaches us nothing else, he, it teaches us really we don't have any escape in confronting Jesus Christ. We can put it off for a while with our excuses, but one day we're going to have to make a decision. We can do it now or we can do it later. Who remembers the Midas commercials back in the day? And they'd, uh, yeah, remember, and they'd take the, the car, they'd keep ignoring the car, ignoring the car, and they wouldn't get it fixed. And, and, and the old guy at Midas said, that's fine. You can pay me now, or you can pay me later. Paul says, we will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. It's going to be a lot better for you and me if we do it now. Because one day, Paul says, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One day, we'll all do it. It's going to be a whole lot better on this side. We've got to make a decision. We can put it off for a while, but one day it will come. But Pilate, thirdly, tried to do away totally with the responsibility of condemning Jesus. He said, not only am I, I just can't make a decision, I'm not going to make a decision, but it's really not my responsibility to make this decision. I'm not taking any ownership of it. People tell me, oh, I just don't believe in God at all. You know, I'm kind of an agnostic, so I really don't need to decide in Jesus. But I say, well, that's okay, God believes in you. And that's the main thing. Pilate saw he couldn't avoid Jesus' death. And, and um, one gospel even says he, he gets so frustrated, he, he's going to put the decision on the crowd. And what does he do? He takes the basin of water and he washes his hands. And he says, I'm washing my hands of this. His blood's not on my hands. It's on your hands. But we know the death of Jesus is on all of our hands, don't we? Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we've got to learn that in life, but in spiritual matters, we have to take the responsibility of following and serving Christ. We can't give that responsibility away to others. And we do it a little differently these days. I'll hear statements like, well, I don't come to church anymore because... 30 years ago, so-and-so hurt me and said this, and I'm still mad about it. It's their fault I don't come to church. No, it's not their fault. You make the decision. I wasn't asked to sing the solo in the, in the Christmas cantata, or I wasn't asked to lead that class, or they passed me over for deacon once again. I'm not coming anymore. I'll show them. No, we can't blame our decisions on others. 
can we? We're all responsible before God for what we decide personally. Christianity is a personal faith between you and your Lord. Pilate had every warning. He had every opportunity to accept Jesus for the innocent man and for the Son of God that he was, didn't he? He sensed the justice of Jesus. His conscience told him that Jesus was innocent. His troubled wife told him that Jesus was innocent. One time you need to believe in your wives, guys. No, just kidding. Over times too. But he couldn't make a decision for Christ because of his pride, because of his position, because of his fear of what other people would think about him. And it begs us to ask, what's our reason for not deciding for Jesus Christ? And giving him all that we have. What we learn is that we all must decide what we're going to do with Jesus for ourselves. Are we going to encounter his love and his grace and his goodness? Or are we just going to keep on ignoring him and living out our lives as normal every day? We have two different traditions of what happened to Pilate. The Bible doesn't say... History doesn't really say. It's probably an insignificant character in the scheme of things. One tradition says that after a failed political career in Rome, that one day Pilate just committed suicide and took his life. There's another tradition out of the Christian church that says that through the years, one year, one day, both Pilate and his wife believed in Jesus and became Christians. It's like the ending of a good novel, isn't it? Leaves us wondering. Well, it leaves us wondering because it asks us, what decision are we going to make? Sin and death or salvation and eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord? I hope he chose Jesus' as forgiveness. But the more important question this day is what choice do you make? We remembered the life of the great Billy Graham last few weeks. And I looked to see kind of what Billy Graham has said about making decisions. And I found two really good quotes from him. Uh, the first one speaks a little about to his testimony. Billy Graham said, By faith, I accepted Jesus for what he claimed to be, the Son of the living God. That simple decision changed my life. And I have seen it change the lives of countless others across the world. And then he said, Jesus does not let us to be neutral about him. Jesus demands that we decide about him. And that's the gospel truth, isn't it? That's the gospel truth. Is that each of us must decide for ourselves that Jesus is the Son of God. And if Jesus is the Son of God, He died for our sin. And He rose again that we may be the first. He's the first fruits of the resurrection. We may follow Him and be with Him in glory forever. What will you decide today about Jesus? Let's pray together. Lord, thank You for taking all that, that you had to take for those hours in the trial and in the beatings, marching towards the cross, we are eternally grateful for all that you did for us. Lord, give us the courage, the courage that you had to stand there in silence, bearing our sin, and may we just recognize you for the loving Savior you are. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen.